I'm Lynn Turner Fitzgerald with Cold Cases of Yellowstone County, where we will examine several unsolved murder cases. In this episode, we look at the case of Miranda Fenner. On November the 15th, 1998, when Miranda was just 18 years old, she was closing up at the Laurel Movie Store where she worked. One or more people entered the store, drug her to the back of the building, and stabbed her in the throat. They fled with the store's cash. Miranda managed to crawl to the front of the building, out the front door, and was discovered by passers-by. She died in the hospital two hours later. Let me ask you about that night. What was the first indication that you had that something was wrong? I got a phone call at work, and it was my mom. They owned a motel just directly across the street almost, mm -hmm. and she said, um, I think she said, honey, something happened at the movie store. They took Miranda to the hospital. That's all I pretty much knew. What did you think? Well, um, because she'd been in this car accident, she had broken her neck and she was in a halo for a number of months. And I automatically just assumed that she had climbed up on a chair or a ladder f to move a movie poster or something and she hurt herself, you know, that sure. that's what I sure. thought. And then you got to the hospital? I got to the hospital. Um, I got there first. My husband and son hadn't gotten there yet. Um, nobody told me anything other than they put me in this little white room and then I knew things were not very good. All by yourself? Yes. For how long? Um, I don't think that was very long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes and then um, my husband got there and um, They moved us upstairs to a he different... He met you in the, in the small room? Yeah, they brought him to this small room to... Um, it was at St. Vincent. I, I remember that n nurse or one of the ladies that had the um, nun-looking outfit on um, brought him in, and nobody really told us anything. They just took us upstairs, and we were in this other room. Um, my brother showed up, my parents showed up, um, some friends showed up. Um, I got the call at work, it was about um, between 8 and 8.30. Mm -hmm. um, nobody told us anything until they walked in the room. A doctor walked in the room and said she was gone. We didn't know anything, nothing. And then after that, um, I think law enforcement came in then, I can't remember. Um, by the time they told us, um, it was just a few minutes before the news was going to come on. It was on the news already. What happened after that? <sighs> we stayed there for quite a while because they were going to prepare her body so we could look at her. Um, we couldn't touch her because it was an investigation, so all you could do was look at her. What we were told is that she died of um, a stab wound to her neck. That's all we were really told, that there was a robbery at the movie store and that she um, had um, a stab wound to the neck and that um, two men driving by in a, f in a truck seen her laying out there and they were the ones that called. Um, Did you think this is a mistake, this isn't my daughter? I or mean you see how close the movie store is to where we live. Usually she, away. usually she walked to work, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I had talked to her on the phone 
that afternoon, um, about, I don't know, five-ish or so, she had called me at work. Um, from her work, she called you? Yeah, she called me from work. She was going to meet up with a girlfriend later that night or wanted to know something, um, something that happened to do with a girlfriend. And I remember that um, my brother told me that he, she had called him about 7-ish, 6.30, 7-ish, because she had a movie poster that she was sure one of her cousins would want to put up in the room or something. Yeah. Who would she be today? <laughs> Maybe a mother. I don't know. Maybe, um... I just, I can't even imagine what my life would be like if she was here. It's been so long that she's been gone. Um, um, it sounds like she was close, though, to you and the family. Oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, we did. A real part of oh, everyone's life. Yes, 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 yes. Um, I mean, we, we did everything thing together you know I mean that's good for mothers and daughters that oh yeah yeah happen. oh yeah no we were we were very fortunate to have um, a very good relationship did she have some specific ambitions um, yeah she wanted to do something with kids eventually um, she um, always kind of had um, a soft spot for um, the renegade girlfriend at school, you know. Um, some of the people that she would bring over the house sometimes is like, oh no, for reals, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's you know that's who she was so you just uh, you know it's not to say that she wouldn't be frustrated sometimes you know she you know yeah. make friends with this person and um, some of their life choices weren't always the best and she would be a little bit frustrated with some of her friends choices from time to so time she had a big heart oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. very um, Loved her animals. I mean, um, was she a good sister? Yes, she was. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Have you had, well, I know that you have gone through grief counseling and the stages of grief. The, there's anger. Tell me about the anger. I guess I'm most angry. Um, Cause I just always want her here. You know, I'm just, I don't think the person that killed her or people that do things like that realize really what they do. I mean, she died of these knife wounds, but as far as that physical injury, I feel that emotional injury. I mean, I might as well have been stabbed because that's how far deep into my heart that feels. It's the anger, um, it's, it's been so long that I'm just not even, I don't have the energy to be angry anymore. Um, my husband is extremely angry. Um, lots of people that I know are still extremely angry. It's not that, to say that I've forgiven anybody, you know, because that just, 
for me, that will never happen. I mean, I would. What would you say if you met that person today? What would you say? That I wished him the worst kind of death possible. I would feel no remorse for him in the slightest. Um, you know, I guess I just, I don't understand because things like that aren't supposed to happen here, you know? You, you, you live three blocks from where she works, you know? So you just always assumed that it was gonna be a, a safe place. And, you know, I guess we've just learned up front that there is, there is no safe place. Do you think it was place. random? Um, because of what I know about my daughter, um, my feelings are that she knew that person. Otherwise, one of the ragtag people that she might have maybe, up. maybe I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe not directly knew them. Maybe knew of them. Knew in a roundabout. You know, when you live in a small town, everybody knows everybody. You know, and. I just can't imagine that that it would have gotten as out of hand as it did so I don't I don't know I just don't know how it could happen without her not feeling threatened you know immediately and people come and go in the movie store so often and it's it's kind of visible being right there on the corner i know um in fact my son was out on his bike that night and actually i guess i should back up i think the reason that mike found out that there was something going on there is he was going to stop in there and get a game and he seen the police cars around there and he came home and told mike that there was something going down there I just personally, we both, me and my husband both personally think that she knew of this person, of these people, I, you know, one, two, three, I don't know. Well, if she knew them, other people knew them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What would you yeah. say to those other people that might know them? I can't believe that they haven't come forward before now. I mean, I just... I, I just don't know why, I, in all the phone calls that we've, you know, we've gotten phone calls all hours of the night here at the like home. What? People calling on the phone saying that they know something. Anonymous phone Anonymous. Calls? Well, you know, we ain't got caller ID anymore, you know, so they, they usually say that they don't want to tell me their name, but I know their name on caller ID, and... That's why we always have pencil and paper by the phone. You know, you just never know. Um, we've got letters in the mail. We've had knocks on the phone at the, the front door. Um, we've had people come up to the back gate when we've in, been in the backyard. I've had people approach me in a parking lot. Um, Trying to be helpful? Well, they just, usually I have a poster on my vehicle and someone will walk up and go, you know, do you do you know this person? And I'll just say, yeah. And I don't usually tell them how I know unless they specifically ask me. Um, and they'll sometimes say, well, you know, a buddy of mine or a friend of mine or a, someone I know knows something about this. And through trial and error, I've learned through the years to ask as many possible questions as I can, names, phone numbers, where they may live, um, point out the phone number on there. I always have extra posters in my vehicle, so I always hand them a poster so they've got the phone number handy. And um, through the years I've learned that yeah, I was so good at driver's license on a uh, driver's um, license plate off the vehicle because that way, if they don't contact law enforcement, at least I've got something to give law enforcement. 
Have any of these panned out? Have any of these conversations led anywhere? We've had so many conversations and so many letters through the years. Um, every time you get one, you got to figure it's going to be the right piece of information, you know. Um, whenever I've handed it to law enforcement, they never just brush it under the table, ever, ever, ever. They always, um, depending on what it is, I'll usually call them and tell them what it is. And sometimes, um, depending on the name or something, I just give them the name over the phone. Um, if it's an article of mail, usually I'll give them the names or the whatever immediate information off of it and then um, that's usually enough and then next time I go into Billings or if we're in town I'll give it to bring it along and give it to them. Um, I usually never drop it in the mail. I always usually hand deliver it because that way it gives me a chance to visualize with law enforcement and through the years um, I would like to say that I've established relationships with them. Do you think the killer will be found? There's not a doubt in my mind. There are times that it's been difficult uh, just because um, um, when, uh, when Miranda was killed, Shane and I were fresh out of the academy. We had just graduated that weekend. Um, I believe the day after the homicide was Shane's first day on the street. So um, when I go and see Mrs. Fenner, it's kind of hard for me to sit there and, and talk with her knowing, knowing what we know and we can't tell her, you know, to keep the integrity of the investigation. You know, sometimes it can be, it's, it's a tragic relationship. Um, people you'd rather not know for obvious reasons. Um, however, we work very well with the Fenners. Um, we have open lines of communication. Um, they know what direction we're going in the investigation in most cases, and uh, I, uh, it, it's great to work with them. Even though law enforcement I know has lots of information, um, obviously they don't have everything they need or else it would, or else we wouldn't be sitting here now. You know, there's still, there's still something missing. Since the Miranda Fenner case had been uh, brought to life again here, so to speak, we, we have found that um, people out there know stuff. And, and we're getting calls, literally hundreds of tips between the Laurel Police Department and the Sheriff's Office that have come in, followed up on. Some of them can be um, pretty much put aside because it might not be good, accurate information, but everything is followed up on regardless of where the information comes from or what the information is. That if you've got the information, it's been a long 14 years for me, and hopefully it's been just as difficult for the people that have the information that haven't come forward yet. Um, call law enforcement if you've got the information. If, if a friend of yours knows something um, and they've told you something that you don't think you wanted to tell someone, you know, Call it in. Anything, any, no, there's not a bad tip. Anything that might come in that somebody might have said, somebody might have overheard. You know, there, there's people out there that probably hang out at the same places with, uh, with the possible suspects or perpetrators in these crimes that maybe somebody says something, uh, somebody doesn't give it much thought. And then uh, something pops up that says, you know, I heard something similar to that. Uh, maybe years ago, but I never really gave it much thought. Well, we want to know about those things. And if somebody has any information whatsoever, we want them to bring it forward and, and we'll follow up on it. They can call the cold case number. It's on the website. It's in the sheriff's office website. Uh, they can certainly call, just say they want to remain anonymous. We don't track these calls. We don't follow, uh, you know, like the if it happens to come across a, uh, a line that has caller ID on it, the, the intent, if they if they want to remain anonymous, we wouldn't we would not um, do anything to hurt that trust. We want people to come to us, and we want them to be very assured that we would not try to track them down. Uh, hope that they would contact us again if there's more information. I wasn't a very nice person to live with after this happened. You know what, just um. 
grief is like something I've never ever experienced in my whole life and you know I've worked really hard to get where I am but there's still days that you know I can just drop in the fetal position and curl in a ball and just cry for hours but it doesn't bring back we know we don't want to live here for the rest of our lives, definitely. Because of that? Um, or no? That has a lot to do with it, you know. It's just... We moved here from California 20 years ago because we wanted a safe place to raise our family. And it just didn't work out like that, you know. I mean, it's, it's a good place to live. Um, and we do have lots of support, you know, besides family and friends. Um, people that we met when we first moved here, people that knew Miranda. I mean, a friend of mine, I ran into him and told him that I was doing these new posters. And he says, I've got decals. And he has his own business. And I said, do you want some for your trucks? And he goes, I want a dozen, you know, I mean, our friends will still do anything that they can to help us. I would say that we've made progress, yes, yeah. And, and probably a considerable amount of progress on it, so if... Um, There's a lot of time, though, between now and 1998. A lot of time has gone by. And we've got more time to follow up on it, too. We don't want to do anything that's going to compromise this case. So while we have several people in this case and we have uh and, and the other cases as well not just this one we've got people working on all of them at the same time we don't want to do something that's going to either jeopardize um, any of the the, the continuity of, of the investigators we want everybody working together and we want to make sure that there's no uh, mistakes i guess so to speak so if it takes time like i said it's been a long time and if it takes longer well so be it we want to make sure we do it right as a law enforcement officer, when, when you work a case and it doesn't get solved and it doesn't get solved, does it stay with you? Does it nag you? Absolutely. And that's, that's uh, you can see that in, the, in the, uh, the demeanor and the attitudes of the guys that are working these cases. Several of the people that were originally involved in these cases are on a part of the cold case unit. And uh, one in particular that was out of the country actually found out about this and, and emailed me stating, hey, I was involved in one of these, these incidents as far as the, an original investigator back in the 70s. When I come back, I want to help solve this case. And he's back and he's helping. And, um, and, and the other people that were involved in some of these investigations, they're, they're excited about it too. They, they talk about these things. We have a me monthly meeting. And they get together and we talk about these these cases and you can see that i mean as soon as something new comes up or or, or two people find something that has a similar similarity they'll i mean you can't move on to the next person almost because they want to discuss these cases that's how excited they are about possibly trying to solve these cases and finally tell me about the importance of dna well dna is going to be a real important part of, of cold case work because these these investigations were done very very well we're not opening up a case that that was not investigated properly but technology has come along to the point now where especially dna is going to be very important a, a lot of the evidence still remains from a lot of these cases and a lot of dna testing can still be done we just want to make sure we send in the proper uh, evidence for dna testing and we're doing the right type of dna testing and of course, DNA testing is very, very expensive. So when it comes to the point that we um, uh, are going to send something in, we want to make sure we do it correctly. Uh, so far, we've collected in donations from the community a little over six thousand um, dollars, probably closer to seven thousand dollars in contributions, and uh, that's that's from private individuals. It's from uh, companies and and. Obviously, we're, we're open to taking these. All this money, every dime of it, is going to go into a special account for DNA testing only. We won't use it for sending off other evidence or, or um, for any other equipment for the unit or anything. We've actually had people donate things, um, printers, computers. Uh, it, it's, it's been very, very exciting the way that communities come to support this, this unit. So, uh, like I said, the, the money that goes into this, this uh, unit actually goes to DNA testing. And when we 
get to the point where we have stuff that we want to send in, that's that's how we'll pay for it. Well, so if you don't mind, mm -hmm. I'd like to ask you then, is the cold case unit strictly funded now by donations? Well, because you have all the volunteer work going right. on, so that's a donation. Absolutely. You have community contributions coming in, in money and equipment, those are donations. Is there budget for it out of Yellowstone County to support it? We do have some money budgeted out of the Sheriff's Office budget. It's a very minimal amount, and we've actually had to use some of the money for some DNA testing because we wanted to get this sent in right away. And um, we're still, we don't have, um, I should say, all of the results back at this point, so, so we really don't want to discuss that too much. But um, we, we've had to put some Sheriff's Office uh, fund some of our budget into this and and we'll do what's necessary I mean, it, it doesn't matter if it's a cold case or if it's a, an investigation we're doing from a, a crime that happened yesterday the investigation needs to go on you, you as you start to review these cases and you look through things you know you, you come across things that you, you can see if you just had that piece how easy things could start falling into place and it makes it frustrating that you know somebody out there knows or somebody out there has the key to put this all together and it's frustrating because we don't have the information to get right to it or you know or, or somebody that for whatever reason has some reservation about bringing it forward do they need to have reservations about bringing something forward if they have a piece of information that can help us solve this uh, I don't think so you know it would be great to to close some of these off and you know we have some outstanding cases that have been open for a long time and families deserve the closure you know they've lost a loved one and they've been dealing with it for 30 some years in some cases and it'd be nice to be able to give that back to the family so they can finally put it to rest. This November 15th will mark 14 years since the murder of Miranda Fenner. If you have information, please contact the Yellowstone County Sheriff's Department at area code 406-256-2929 or the cold case unit at 869-3530.